everyone, happy new year. Welcome to 2018. My name is CI, welcome to the CI Show. I am so excited that you are joining me today. I don't know about you, but I'm so expectant for all that God is gonna be doing in this new year. To those of you who are returning viewers, you have been keeping up with the CI Show, thank you so much. I appreciate it from the bottom of my, of my heart that you would come and join us and watch all that God is doing through this show. If this is your first time watching Welcome to you. I hope that you get to enjoy today's topic. The whole purpose of the CI show is to number one, love people, reach millennials, and exalt Jesus. We hope that through the CI show, you can get a biblical perspective on life. And so today's topic is going to be called the process. I'm so excited for you to meet the couple that we have on the show today. This couple has gone through the process and is still going through just the process of, of life. They have just gotten married. They went through a long process of, of dating and waiting for each other. They waited close to 30 years to meet the one that God had set aside for them and that was each other. And so I'm so excited that you get to be watching me today on the show and just asking them different questions about the process because the truth is it's only January. We have a long way to go. I read a, a quote of, from someone who posted on Facebook the other day. They said, Said, oh, I already messed up 2019 is my year I kind of laughed it off but don't give up before you even start the process is long but God is so faithful to follow you through to the end so enjoy today's show and I want you to come in with me so that you can meet our couple who's gonna be encouraging us today Well, we're the newest Katina couple. You can call us K2. <laughs> but I'm Moses, Moses Katina, the campus pastor um, at Great Life 310. And I'm just so happy mm -hmm. in what God has called us to do. And this is my wife. She's going to go ahead and introduce herself. My name is Mele Katina. I am also a cohort helper for my husband here at Great Life 310. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, back in New Zealand, I am an early childhood teacher, born in Tonga and raised in NZ. Awesome. And NZ means New Zealand, for those <laughs> of you who do not know. But we are so glad to have Pastor Moses and Mele who are on the show today. And, and today we're just going to be uh, talking about the process that they are currently in. As you can, as you have heard, they are living full lives already as a married mm -hmm. couple, pastoring a church, and, and Mele is an early childhood teacher. And so we are just believing for the great things that are going to come uh, in their marriage. But today we're going to jump right into it, uh, Moses and Mele. And one of the questions I want to ask you both is, what was one of the hardest things that you've encountered during the waiting period. Um, what I had explained to everyone before was that you both have waited close to 30 years before you, and that's unheard of in our generation, you know, for, for um, our generation to wait close to 30 years and, and just hearing the number 30 years, you know, that sounds like a long time, but when you wait that long for what God has in store for you, it's very much worth it. And so yeah. if you both can just, answer that question today. What was one of the hardest things that you've encountered during the waiting period? And maybe we can start with you, Mel. The hardest thing I would say would probably be settling for less. Mm. Um, and I didn't understand what love was until I actually had an encounter with God and I actually understood what love was. So in, in natural fact, if I had to look at past experiences, I think I've settled, you know, just that, mm. that spirit of just, what if, it never happens. What if this wow. is just the time? Just yeah. go ahead and do it, you know? Um, just sitting for for this instead of waiting for God's best. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Well, I think for me, um, I just turned 30 years old last year, so 
God showed up just in time. <laughs> but, you know, growing up in the church, we normally think, or if you're anything like me, you're, you normally hear situations where it, it's single girls growing up, you know, mm -hmm. being worried about, you know, if they are supposed to be married, if they're, if, if they're going to be single the rest of yeah. their life. But to tell you the truth, you know, growing up, loving God passionately, I love God with a passion. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say that I was worried. You know, mm -hmm. growing up, you know, because, you know, you grow up, you, you're single for a long time, um, and then another year passes and you're still single. You're loving the Lord, you're serving Him passionately, um, but another year passes and you're still single. Wow. And, yeah. you know, some, I, I, got, I got to think, okay, what's going on? Maybe, you know, my lot in life is just to be single and, you know, I don't want to, Lord, I don't want to be a monk or, you know, I don't <laughs> want to be a, you know, a priest. I, I know deep down inside, I know I, I I know I was meant to be married. I know I was meant to have a partner. And so yeah. you have all those thoughts as a single person. Yeah. You know, so I would say the toughest part of that is in the waiting. Yeah. You have to learn to trust God. You have mm -hmm. to learn to develop a relationship with Him and be complete in Him. That's yeah. good. During that time. Because if not, man, like, you know, Miller said, you will settle for less. Yeah. You will settle for something um, that's less than God's best for you. Yeah. yeah. You know, so the heart, the hardest part for me was the waiting, but thank God I, I, I made it through. Yeah. And um, God's faithful, man. You just yeah. got to continue to trust him. That's good. I, I love that, Mel, you had brought up just settling, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of our generation, we tend to do that. And I'm not just talking about those of you who are watching, but even us, you know, mm -hmm. those who, you know, Mo, Mo is my older brother and, and growing up in ministry, um, you think that you just continue to go for what yeah. God has for you. But as as millennials, we cannot settle. Yeah. We cannot yeah. just, uh, you know, you've heard that saying before, True. if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for yeah. anything. If you don't stand for your relationship with God, you'll settle for any relationship. And yeah. so I love that you both had brought that up. Now, moving from waiting for the person that God had for you, then mm -hmm. you guys started dating. And even that was a whole nother season mm -hmm. of the process. And so during dating, what I want to ask you too is, uh, you did the whole long distance thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Mo, you were here in California. Mel, you were living in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. What could you encourage those who are in the same season? Those who may be doing the long distance thing, what would you encourage them with? I'd have to say that long distance relationships and long distance dating, um, I'm not going to say it's easy. It, mm -hmm. it is tough. You know, yeah. I know me and Mel have dated a year before we got married. And mm -hmm. so I can say it's a, it's a really tough position to be in. Mm -hmm. But if there's any encouragement I could give to anybody out there who is in the midst of a long distance relationship or uh, maybe you're um, in a long distance courtship, one of the encourage encouragements I would give you is to set goals. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. good. Obviously, the person that you are in a long-distance relationship with, whether you're oceans apart or maybe you're states apart or even countries apart, mm -hmm. like how we were, um, it does take a lot of dedication. Yeah. yeah. So that person must mean a lot to you if yeah. you're going to invest in a long-distance relationship. So mm -hmm. just like anything else that's valuable in your life, you ought to set goals. Yeah. You know, is, does this person mean... A lot to you that you will keep that relationship alive yeah, and just like great. anything that you want to grow in your life you want to make sure that you're investing well mm -hmm. in that relationship and I didn't always get it right but you know I know that eventually I, I started to sow some really important seeds so that I could see what I wanted to see in our you know, in our long-distance mm -hmm. relationship and now we're married um, and I'm, I'm that's one thing that I look back on that I know will really help any long distance relationship. Set goals. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's when good. when are you going to go and see him or her? You know, mm -hmm. when are you planning is marriage in the picture? Yeah. These are all practical things yeah. Yeah. that I really believe need to be done if you're going to want a successful long that's distance good. relationship and see a fruit out of it. Yeah. So that's what I would say. Set goals. Yeah. I would certainly agree with my husband as well about dating with a purpose. You know, mm -hmm. not just dating Very for the sake good. of it. For me it's 
for me as a young girl, I think dating with a purpose is very important. Yeah. Um, not just dating for the sake of it, just it's time consuming. Yeah. But at the same time, um, I think for me as well, foundation was very important. Very good. Keeping Jesus the center of our relationship made a whole That's lot of difference. Really cool. yeah. um, and the way that we respected each other, the way that we talked, the way that we looked at the future, it was always important that we kept Jesus in the center of our relationship. That's so good. I love what both Mo and Mel said, you know, setting goals. Um, I, I go back to what Mo said, you know, is marriage in the picture? Mm. Because I would like to add, if marriage is not in the picture, mm. why are you dating? Because the person that you are dating, you wanna, if marriage is in the picture, it changes everything, yeah. you know, because mm -hmm. you know, okay, this is a person I'm gonna spend my life with, therefore I'm going to set goals. Because setting goals and dating with mm. the purpose go hand in hand. There's not going to be any goals if there's no purpose. There's not going to be any purpose if there's no goals that are set into place. And, and Mo and Mele have dated, you know, like they said, for a year. Mo was here in California. Mel was in New Zealand. So I could imagine how hard that is. And so now moving into marriage, you know, you guys just got married uh, in September of, of 2017. And so... Even now in marriage, you guys are still in the process. You're still, they are still in the yeah. process. Uh, if you understand anything about, you know, living outside of America mm -hmm. in a different country, you go through yeah. the visa process and everything. So that's currently what Mo and Mele are going through. You know, mm -hmm. Mele is back and forth between New Zealand and California. Mo is back and forth between California and New Zealand. And so even still now, you're still mm -hmm. having to apply the whole thing, you know, setting goals and, and now being married with a purpose mm -hmm. because even in marriage, we can settle. Yeah. We can have that sure. settling spirit. And yeah. so what I want to ask you both is what are some ways that you would encourage people on how not to get discouraged during the waiting period and maybe you can answer this Mel first is how would you encourage people who are in the waiting period right now to not get discouraged mm. for me just the past few months I've realized that being productive is very important not just waiting for me now I'm gonna see my husband again or sitting you know just getting excited about this but being productive is like asking God Lord what is your purpose for That's this season good. you know what can I do here while I'm here in New Zealand and just looking at different ways of my mentality of just seeing things differently and that's just being good. super positive about it and understanding it's just the season. Yeah. That's very important. That's me. good. Well, I personally feel that, you know, this visa process needs to hurry up because <laughs> I need my wife back here in, 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 in California because it is difficult. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't suggest that married people be apart for this long. Yeah. Um, but obviously me and uh, my wife are in this season right now and I really believe that God is giving, has given us the grace yeah. to hold us through this season yeah, until yeah. it's done, until she's, um, you know, just back here in my arms. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to encourage those out there who are married and who are separated. You know, you, you, your your scenario could be uh, your husband is in the army and he's been yeah, deployed. He's going to be deployed for either a couple months to a year. I feel for couples yeah, like that. Good, yeah. You know, or just um, you you might be a stay at home dad or mom. You yeah. know. And your husband is away at work, you know. Yeah. So, we would like to encourage you about is pray for your spouse yeah. because now that we're married, it's not like we're dating anymore. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because we're under the 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 covenant of marriage, God has God holds us to a higher standard. Yeah. Mm. And that's something that I realize as a husband, I can't mess around with. That's good. I need to pray for yeah. my wife. That's I need good. to allow myself to pray for her every day you know praying for her workplace praying mm -hmm. you know another situation for her visa process it's important that we cover our spouse um, under the blood of jesus just praying for them because mm -hmm. the enemy is out to destroy families yeah, yeah. you know and a, a family is not just when you have kids a family you know me and Melly, this is our family yeah and That's because good. the devil hates families, he's going to try to rip it apart, even yeah. as young as our marriage is, yeah. you know. And so one of the things that I would like to encourage any couple out there who is separated for um, weeks, months, or even years, and you still you still believe in the covenant, you know, um, 
another thing I was talking over with with my wife about is remembering your vows. Yeah. Remembering why you said I do to That's that person. Mm. There's you didn't just do it. There's God had brought you together. Yeah. And while you're apart, the enemy will try to mess with your mind and say, well, you know, um, those were vows you said at that time, but maybe this is not the relate. Maybe this is not the connection for you because. You know, he's gone for wow. so long or yeah. she's gone. That's and good. he will try to do everything yeah. he can to pull you apart. So what's my biggest encouragement? Pray for your spouse. Yeah. Yeah. I pray That's for my good. wife every day that she's gone, you know. Yeah. And it's getting tougher and tougher every time she has to leave. This is the second time now mm -hmm. that she's going. But like I said, I know God's given us the grace yeah. you know, during this time. Yeah. And as long as I do what I need to do as the head of my household cover my wife in prayer. I even, I even pray for my, my kids, our kids that we don't have yet. Mm -hmm. You know, just doing that. It's, Very good. It, it, God really comes through and he helps and strengthens our, our, our marriage. That was very good, Mo. I love that point. You know, praying for your spouse. Even yeah. those who have spouses that are incarcerated as well. Because I know True. even mm -hmm. during that kind of waiting period, um, that it becomes quite difficult. I've, I've talked to several wives, several husbands who their spouse is incarcerated. And, and the enemy, I love what you said, yeah. Mo, plays on that. Mm -hmm. Where they play on the fact that, well, look at where your spouse is. Or, or maybe this is not God's will for you. The moment you said, I do in marriage, God said, I do too. Yeah. And so don't you give up in That's the waiting good. period. Because God is still on the throne. He is still working on your behalf. We're going to go ahead and take a quick quick break and when we come back we are going to talk about the benefits of the waiting period because I know that there's so many people who mm -hmm. think that the waiting period is maybe God punishing them or or maybe it's because they did something wrong so that's why they ended up in this situation but you know what God is no he God knows what he's doing yeah. Yeah. in the waiting period so stay right where you are yes. uh, come back in a couple of minutes and we will be talking about the benefits of the waiting period we'll see you soon who has been encouraging us on so many amazing things about the process. And so our last question for today, Mo and Mele, would be, what are the benefits of the waiting period? We talked about the hard times. We've mm -hmm. talked about the different seasons of discouragement mm -hmm. and, and whatever that you've been through during the waiting period. Now let's talk about the highs and the benefits yeah. of what it means to wait patiently. Well, the benefits of being married to this Tongan girl is... Um, <laughs> Obviously, the process is difficult. You know, I don't, I, I don't know of any process um, that doesn't have its challenges, but, but it's true. It does have benefits. There are a lot of benefits. And I think one of the benefits through this process that we are currently still in um, is just me getting stronger. It has definitely made me stronger in my word life. Yeah, yeah that's good. Because every time my wife comes and she leaves. I'm not gonna lie, it messes with my mind a lot of times, you know, because sometimes I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna wait for happy times until she comes back, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've tried, you know, there are some days where, oh, let me just sleep this day away until, you know, it passes, mm -hmm. and, you know, and be one day yeah. closer until she comes back again, you know? Yeah. But I don't believe that's God's desire, is that we yeah. just waste time in yeah. the process, yeah. you know? What does God normally do in the process? I find it's his opportunity, well, it's it really, his time to shape my character, which has really been shaped during this time. Yeah. And I've turned more to the word yeah. during this time. That's good. And what does the word of God do? It strengthens you. It yeah. fills you with the voids that you have. And for me, it's during this time that me and my wife are apart. Mm -hmm. And so I thank God for this process. I don't regret any part of this process because it's really teaching me patience as well. That's yeah. good. You know, being patient for the time that we are reunited. Yeah. Setting goals, making plans for, okay, while we are apart, this is what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So that um, when we get together, this is what is going to be done. Mm 
Yeah. Mm. And I love this process because it's also shaping me and bettering all the parts of me that I need so that when we're connected again, yeah. I'm way better than I was before. That's good. So it's just the word of God being built stronger in my life, discipline. Mm. And uh, so some of you are like, well, oh, it's all like benefits, but, <laughs> but those are benefits to me. Yeah. You know, yeah. those, those are benefits that are making me a better person That's good. so that when she comes, when she comes back, she sees, wow, you're actually, you know, way better, you know, way greater than mm. last time. You That's know? good. Um, and it's something she tells me every day. You know, so. <laughs> For me, I would say it definitely builds me up, um, makes me stronger, and I see it, it makes my husband stronger as a, a marriage as well. Seeing prayer life really come to play, like That's good. everything that we prayed for, God shows favor. He's been so faithful in so many yeah. ways, and um, I think the the other benefits that we see is that uh, I get really excited about what the future will hold because I That's know God good. is using this as an endurance time. Yeah. How you know how patient are we with and how faithful are we with in the season that we're in right now? So I'm always excited about. I wonder what you know what God has in store for us in the next few years, like even five years from now. You know how will He use our children? Very just good. just thinking things like that it, ma it makes me think broader and it makes me feel excited in my spirit and I feel yeah. so so ready for um whatever it may be. You know maybe now it's just a season like we spoke about it. Um, it's just a season. It's just a period of time that yeah. we will have to face this you know not not anything that's good is gonna be nice and easy you know? yeah everything that is that requires hard work and effort very good. you have to go through a process you yeah. have to go through yeah. an endurance you know you build exactly that. so i think it also makes you realize i never had that ability i never knew i could do that yeah you know? so just through this i think that's wonderful benefits very good and, and i'm glad that you know mo and melia have just brought up you know being closer to jesus mm -hmm. that's what the process does it it refines yes. you, yeah. it refreshes you, and, and I love um, that your both of your stories are still being written mm -hmm. in the process. And, and you know, through the process, God never stops. He yeah. keeps working on your behalf. He keeps working on what, what is going on behind the scenes. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I would like to say that even when it seems like nothing is happening, yeah. that God is not speaking, that God is not moving, very well, those could be the times that he is moving the most. You right. just don't know it. And so I want to thank you, Mo and Mele, for sharing such a personal part of your journey with us. And, and we will continue to pray that the process will, will continue to supernaturally move on, move yeah. quickly so that you both can be together again. And I want to say thank you so much to all of you who tuned in today. You know, the Bible says, do not grow weary in doing well. In another version, it says, don't grow weary in the waiting period because in due season you will reap the harvest and so if you are watching today and, and you're saying you know what CI I'm in that waiting period right now I want you to know friend that we are praying for you we are cheering you on don't give up it is only January we have a long way to go and I believe the best is yet to come in yeah. 2018. Stay yes. expectant, you know, like what Mel had talked about. Be productive. Don't just, you know, wallow in your pity party and, and give yourself, you know, all the reason to stay in bed or like Mo said, to sleep the days away. <laughs> you know, get productive. Get your hand to the plow. The Bible says don't look back because those are the ones that are fit for the kingdom. And so we want to thank you so much for tuning in to the CI show. We are all going through the process. So we are right behind you, cheering you on, and we know that you're going to make it. We love you. Thank you again for tuning in, and we will see you next time.